guys, I'm going to try to do perioperative care in five minutes or less. So perioperative is the umbrella term for preoperative before surgery, intraoperative during surgery, and postoperative after surgery. So let's dive into that a little more. Pre-op is the time that surgery is agreed upon until the time that you are in the OR prepping. So what are you going to do during this stage? You're going to do assessment, and there are certain protocols that you want to take first with assessment. You're going to look at a health history. You're going to look at their vitals. Um, you're going to look at allergies, medications, their fluid and nutrition status. Remember, because some patients have to fast 8 to 12 hours before surgery, or you know they only can have clear liquids. Um, smoking and alcohol intake. So um, usually smokers will have to stop smoking 30 days prior to surgery to decrease risk of infection or maybe their alcohol intake because, you know, you want to avoid giving them some meds um, because of that. So and two, you're also going to do in that assessment pre-op labs. So you're going to do a PT, PTT, which is, you know, looking at for the bleeding, um, you know, and um, hematocrit, hemoglobin, red blood cell, platelets, electrolytes, HCG, which is just um, a pregnancy test, an EKG, and a chest x-ray. Um, make sure they don't have any signs of like a respiratory illness before you go in to operate. So before in the pre-op stage, this is the time too that you're going to have the patient um, engage in informed consent and the nurse is the witness. So that is the nurse's job to witness the patient giving consent for the surgery. And so now we're going to go into intraop. So that is the time that the patient is in the OR until the time they're in the PACU. The PACU is the post anesthesia care unit. So again, you're just going to be assessing that patient. There are three stages in the PACU that we will go over, but I should mention in the time that they're in the OR, you're going to have the universal pause, which is very important. That is a time when all the healthcare providers stop and they make sure that it is the right patient, that it's the right surgery, the right time. Like it's kind of like the six rights of med admin, but with surgery, um, to, you know, prevent those um, wrong side, wrong sided surgeries or, um, you know, just any errors that might occur. Okay, so now post op is that time that they're, or I forgot to go over the PACU stages, sorry. So stage one in, or phase one in the PACU is that first initial phase when they're waking up. This is actually the most um, dangerous stage because this is when complications post-surgery will arise. So you really wanna assess their respiratory rate. You wanna look for shock, hemorrhoids, whatever it may be. Um, and so the nurse is gonna you know, do intensive nursing care. Phase two is when the nurse is going to provide less of that um, intense care, more of that routine um, care, and it's kind of making the patient more self-sufficient in their care because by phase three, that is when they're ready to go home and discharge. So um, post-op, that is the time that they're in the PACU to the time that they have a follow-up with either their surgeon, maybe their primary care doctor. Um, and again, during that phase, you know, you're just going to do that assessment of the patient, um, take vitals, you know, again, pain management and, you know, look for those complications, which are very important. And so now, um, just going into some of these drugs used. So we have antiemetics, you know, some people can have nausea or vomiting after surgery, um, IV acetaminophen that is used more commonly now for pain management after surgery anti-anxiety, Valium, narcotics, morphine, fentanyl, hydromorphone, sedatives. Um, this is used uh, for anesthesia maintenance, so propofol or antibiotics, um, and that will prevent SSIs, which is surgical site infections. And that's kind of during, like, that goes along with the skip protocols, which is very important that we remember. There is quite a few of them, but overall, um, just remembering, you know, there's certain times like you have to stop antibiotics 24 hours post-op um, because it increases the chance of post-op infections longer you give them. Um, and yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, there's protocols for the urinary catheters just because the main, you know, 
uh, goals with perioperative care is, you know, obviously that pain management, preventing infections, and making sure the patient has a good um, outcome. So that is about it. Hopefully I got everything. Oh, and then finally, um, in order for them to transfer um, from the different stages uh, with the PACU, they need to have seven to eight points to transfer in the report. Um, skip protocols are from the Joint Commission. And yeah. All right, guys. Have a good day. Bye.